Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Jackie Kabeni. Thank you so much for the continued support. So this month is the month for applying green card and in that relation, we are on a different scenery and we have a guest today for the very first, but they, you're the first guest in this channel. Oh, yeah. okay. So we are going to do some story time questions all those things about green card so i will let my guest introduce herself and i hope you get to enjoy this video comment and also subscribe subscribe to this channel introduce yourself okay hi guys um my name is betty if if you're from africa it's betty if you're from america betty <laughs> <laughs> yeah so my name is betty if you like it betty and I'm a fan of this YouTube channel. I am a subscriber of this YouTube channel. What else? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that is it. And I'm, and I'm more than happy to be part of this channel today. Yeah, yeah it was a dream come true. Mm -hmm. I was watching the channel when I was back home. And now I am part of this channel today. Yeah. yeah. So who's Betty? Like uh, Nini before before this whole green card, okay. Nini, you give us like a summary, um, a, something short to say, like to summarize who is Betty? Who is Betty? Okay. Uh, so Betty is a chilled, laid back lady. So before the green card, I was just uh, a Kenyan working for the government before God decided um, some other plans for me. In a nutshell, chilled, laid back, soft spoken. <laughs> uh, I was working as a procurement officer back home. Yeah, that was me before the green card. Okay, we have a few questions that I am going to ask and then she is going to like answer and also give us like a story, just flow, flow, flow to you. Take us through your applying journey. When did you decide? How did you know about green card? Like, have you ever been interested? Was this your first time applying? All those things. Well, my green card journey takes me back to uh, back home in Kenya. I was, I was familiar with the word green card. I knew green card was a pass for you to come to America legally. Yeah. So back then when I was growing up, there used to be a family friend to my dad and mom. His, his name was Paul, mm -hmm. but we used to refer him as Fauro yeah. in our common local language. Yeah. So Fauro happened to win the green card Back then, I think in the early 90s or in the early, uh, late 90s or in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So when he won the green card, it was such a huge deal. Mm -hmm. I think the whole of, uh, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> was so happy. Mm -hmm. It was one of those days where people do, people are taken to the airports by three, two, four buses just because of the excitement that somebody is moving abroad. The dream became closer to my dad. If Fauro was able to win the green card, he wanted that for his family, not for him, but his children. He wanted that to pass down to his children. And I remember when I was done with Form 4, like the usual trend, we, we go get our ID, go do ICDL classes, go to driving classes. The first thing my dad made me do was go for, apply for a green card. Immediately I got my my ID, I immediately went and applied for green card. Now what I did know is um, after, I, I had so many assumptions when it comes to green card. I had no knowledge like we do have now, like yeah. we do have the YouTube channels where you can just click, see the kind of information you want with regards to green card. Uh, the information back then was very vague. Nobody will tell you what pertains the journey. Uh, that pertains to green card. So I just went home and chilled. Now this is the assumption I had. The American government. We reach out. We reach out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the assumption I had that the American government will reach out because you've, you've given out your mobile number, your email address. Yeah. 
and since it is a lottery, mm -hmm. I assumed the, I, I think the way we have lotteries on radio stations where they reach out to you and tell you, Okay, yeah, l l let me just put it in Swahili, then you will put the subtitles. Hello, now get a beti. Beti, you can say Kenya. Then, oh, Nico, Nico, Thika. Beti, you can say Kishiriki, you can say Kishiriki, you can say Patapote. Eh, you can say Kishiriki. Eh, you can say Kishiriki, you can say Kishiriki, you can say Kishiriki, you can That is how I expected the news to be delivered. Yeah. <laughs> I did know that when you apply the green card, you're supposed to Go check. not even check, leave with a confirmation number. Oh, yeah. So the studio I went to, they just told us, uh, come for your receipt tomorrow, okay. uh, after three days. Yeah. So we did know the receipt now would have the, con have the confirmation number. And that is also something I'd like to call out. When you go to a cyber back home, just make sure you leave everything has been applied for and you leave with your confirmation number because your confirmation number is what you will use to yeah. check out the results. So I did know the receipt meant coming to mm -hmm. check my, uh, to pick up the confirmation number, which then I would use. Yeah. So that is the assumption I had because the, I assumed the American government is in need of workforce. Mm -hmm. So your work is just to come, avail yourself. Yeah. I also assumed with a green card, mm -hmm. they will give you a house, a job. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, a house, a job, uh, and a car. Mm -hmm. So your work is just to come. Wow. So that is what I assumed. Yeah. And I assume now the American government will reach out. So back then when I applied, I didn't check. I, I didn't confirm. I didn't... So no. You didn't even know whether you yes, I didn't even know whether I won or not. Wow. Yes, and I am sure that is also a problem with many of us. So that was me back in four four. So come twenty twenty, I think that was in twenty twenty. Covid times. Yeah, I think it was in covid times. So I think twenty twenty. Yeah. When did you come? When did you 21. win? When did you win your green card? Twenty nineteen, but I applied twenty eighteen. Okay, so come twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, I think it was twenty twenty. Uh, I used to stay. Uh, of course, we once you're independent, you stay in your own home. Yeah. But I used to frequent home every other weekend just to say hi to my folks. So on this particular weekend, I was home, and my mom was like, "Do you remember Jackie?" I'm like, "Which Jackie?" Uh -huh. And she was like. How many Jackies are there? Yeah. My mom can be <laughs> sarcastic. One and only Jackie. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, what, what about her? She's like, do you know she went to America? I'm like, stop no. it. Stop. <laughs> you just stop. <laughs> and I was like, okay, how? When? You know, all these questions that come running to your mind. How? When? Yeah. I couldn't imagine mm -hmm. that somebody closer to you can win a green card because we all assume green card is just a, specific yeah for specific people you just have to have uh, things in a certain way of course you have to meet the requirements in terms of the photos yeah. and all the details they require you to fill in but somebody closer home because it is a lottery so it is just a system choosing mm -hmm. but somebody closer home it hits home it, yeah. it just hits different yeah. so it's like how when all these questions were ready. Uh, then my mom was like, let me just say it in a Kikuyu language. What did the And people are playing uh, this thing. My mom was like, the like a green card. And you don't and and you just take things lightly. I was like, it's about time. So then I asked her, how did she do it? So uh, she was like, just Jackie just went and took a travel passport and uh, went and applied and she went and took the uh, travel passports on the outskirts of Nairobi yeah. so because it is easier yeah. uh, because of no, the backlog after I won. yeah that is after you won yeah. so he, she was telling me how you do it, how yeah. how you did it yeah. so you went and took your uh, travel passport in the i think she told me you went to Embu Huduma yeah. center yeah. yes because we all assume Nyayo house with the corruption yeah. and the backlog so if you go uh, to the outskirts of Nairobi, mm -hmm. 
you, your case is handled faster and uh, because there are not so many applicants mm. yes in the outskirts of uh, Nairobi so uh, to me, yeah I think it's about time you also took a one I, I didn't have a travel passport mm -hmm. but not to mean you have to have one mm -hmm. during your application mm -hmm. yes but if you do have uh, it is it is good but also if you have a vision of traveling why don't you start looking yeah. for a passport so baby then steps. yeah baby steps yes and manifest these things so uh, I think I went, uh, I, I now started the process of uh, getting my passport. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before, you won or after? before I won. Yeah. So this was in uh, November 2020 now when the applications came in. Mm -hmm. Now that is when I started now wanting to apply. So I, that November, because the applications usually open November 5th, uh, October, to, October to November. Yeah. Yes, so I went to I was working in Upper Hill, so I think um, Nile House was closer because I couldn't get days off to go to Huduma Centers outside uh, Nairobi town. Yeah. So I just went to Nile House and of course mm -hmm. I had to pay somebody mm -hmm. to, to, to first end my process. Yeah. But even so, after I paid, it, it didn't come out as fast as I expected. Mm -hmm. I, I was given a timeline of two weeks because I had the Nairobi we have, there are people who pay, mm -hmm. and the next day they do have their passport. So that is what I was hoping, yeah. but it took time. So my passport came out a day mm -hmm. to the closure of the green card applications. Oh. That was in 2020. So I think I went and took mine over lunchtime. Mm -hmm. By the time I went home, I was just so tired. I just felt I'm not ready to apply for this thing. I just felt tired. I just felt... My heart was not in it. In as much as I knew I was fastening and paying up for this to get my passport, for me, I thought having a passport was a necessity to do the oh. green card application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the mistakes I want to tell people for them to avoid. Yeah. You don't have to have your passport. So it, it just made me to not apply. So my mom and dad were asking, did you apply? I was like, yes, yes, yes. You are lying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dad and mom, oh. I lied. So that was in 2020. So 2020 passed by. So come 2021, mm -hmm. it was just one of those years you don't feel like I'm flying. <laughs> you just, ah, mm -hmm. this thing, ah, just let it pass by. So come 2022, mm -hmm. I remember we were just in the office. Mm -hmm. Of course, in a government office, uh, Fridays are lazy. We were just talking with my colleagues and we were like, it was during one of those, because when the green card applications, open, you find all these placards in town, green card application, outside cybers, you find these placards yeah. saying green card application. When you go to Facebook and Instagram, your FYI is all about green card. At least these people are being prompted because people even didn't know when the applications open, but nowadays there's a lot of information around it. So we just started having a random conversation about it and they were like, ah. By the way, or I to, hey, Iki, do you go to You were like, mm. yeah, this thing. Uh, I thought I had translate. Mm -hmm. uh, these things, uh, people do win. Yes. And we were just joking around it. And then my friend, my colleague was saying, yeah, me, I have a friend who is uh, abroad. And she's, she, he went there by a green card and he's making a killing. Yeah. That is how people call those kind of jobs. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, me also have, uh, they were asking me, do you know somebody who is who has ever one? I was like, yeah, me, I have one. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And then I was like, yeah, me, I have one. And Joking around how the Kisi tribe do win because they use, uh, how do I call it? Juju. A juju. <laughs> because we find a lot of Kisis coming. Mm. Yeah, coming and Wama winning. Jam in a hey, coming yes. and winning this green card. So yes. my, my colleague was. They drew something. They yeah, need to tell us. They need to tell us because these people, yeah. they even don't have to come to Nairobi to, because people mm -hmm. assume people in Nairobi are the ones who win the green card. No. But those Kisis yes. apply from the village and win. And win. Yeah. So we were just talking and laughing about it. So we, you, you see the way we will finish people. Kenyans finish conversations. Yes. We will talk. Uh, we will apply. So mm -hmm. it was just one of those. 
we will ah we a, a, a boo, we will we will give it a shot yeah so i uh because there was nothing much i was doing i said let me just go apply mm-hmm. it was just one of those random things of what am i going to do mm-hmm. in the house so i told my colleague just do this mm-hmm. drop it to this studio need to take to do something else. so I went to this particular studio mm-hmm. yes so I went to this particular studio mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be any particular studio the studio that Jackie used Mark studio yes, yes. It's different from the one I used so I don't think it, if you hear somebody who won and you ask them, oh which studio did you go to I think is you just meet the requirements that are needed yeah it doesn't matter which studio went to. Mm-hmm. So I went to this studio in Halinga. Mm-hmm. I think it was called Bona Studio. So I just went, took my photos, they sent my soft copy via Gmail. Mm-hmm. I just went to the cyber next door. I, I think it was upstairs. Mm-hmm. Just logged in, uh, keyed in the details. Whenever I could find difficulty, I would just call the cyber guy, uh, uh, lady. Mm-hmm. And she just I think there was just one part I think I found it difficult, but it was it is nothing difficult because you're just filling in the details, your level of education, your home address. There's nothing much to it. You're, and then you upload your photo now from my Gmail, which is a soft copy that meets the standards that the green card application requires. True. And I just hit send. So I remember the day I was applied. Wait, so you you applied for yourself? Yes, I did wow. apply for myself, and then nice. I I. I I was in a difficult situation, so I had not paid Wi-Fi back yeah. home. So yeah. I just preferred. I think most Kenyans do go to the cyber. They believe the cybers have the skills mm-hmm. of doing it right. Yeah. So I just went and hit uh, click submit. So I remember the systems. It was one of those last days. Yeah. And the systems were just running because I think the systems were hazy and because everyone is doing. Yes, everybody is rushing Russia. to. to just submit that application and I was just crossing my fingers for I think a minute yeah and then it said mm. click and my confirmation came out I remember I just crossed the road went to my fries had my chico and soda <laughs> and cuckoo went home and went <laughs> home and just, I, I, I could tell I was just at peace with it just yeah. making sure you do the application you do your part then wait 20 I made my application in 2022 so that becomes DB2024. Yes. Yeah. Because of the fiscal the year. year. Yeah. The fiscal year, yeah. year the yes. Year. Now that oh, becomes that nice. uh, DB2024. So you applied November 2022. 20, yes. And I got results May 2023. Yeah. yeah. That is nice. So, were you hopeful? Did you know you were going to win? Um, did you check on time? Did okay. you check the results on time? Okay. So, I was. I w- I am one person who lets go of mm-hmm. things. So I made the application and forgot about it. Yeah. Not really anticipated. Mm-hmm. Oh, but of course now when May came in. Mm-hmm. When you log into your socials, FYI, the result, the green card results are there. Yeah. So at least it, it prompts you and it gives you an idea of when to look. Nowadays they even give you ten days. There are a lot of uh, people on YouTube who update people on their socials. Yeah. So I had that, and uh, well, during May it was a really difficult year for me because things were not really working out. I, I had no job. I was just at home. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those seasons where you are just waiting on God. Yeah. You're just waiting and uh, waiting on God's plan. I'd say that mm-hmm. I was just in that state of surrender. So I was just home and anticipating something. Mm-hmm. I was just hopeful. We were just waiting for feedback from work. Yeah. So it was one of those lazy days where I was just sleeping and eating and repeating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you have nothing much going on. Yeah. And I don't know, at that state I feel I was in a state of surrender. It was it, it is difficult for people to understand that you're waiting on God yeah. because they're thinking you're so lazy, you need to do something. Yeah. But I was just in our season of I was just waiting God God's plan. I think God had affirmed me that He has good plans for me. Mm-hmm. And that is how I was I was really not waiting on the green card, anything that God had for me because I was just 
has hoping to get something so, you know when you've been working for an institution for a couple of years and then things go haywire yeah it it, it disorients you or it it, it it gives you a turnaround of events mm-hmm. so i was just home chilling i remember i, I woke up at 10 <laughs> and i just i i i used to have a bad habit where i used to wake up and the first thing i do is check is my phone I join tiktok instagram for an hour oh. yes <laughs> if you have nothing else to do that is all you do yeah before i now decide what to eat when to bed so i logged into my socials and i was like ah, today is the day mm-hmm. so i decided ah, let me just check so i didn't realize that kenya is ahead of time mm-hmm. the, uh, i think by seven hours yeah yes yeah, so, oh, so when i checked I don't know the response I got, but it was like a bit confusing. Yes, a bit confusing. Yeah. So I said, ah, let me just give it time. Mm-hmm. So I decided to, I cooked pancakes, I took a shower, watched a movie, went back to sleep. Mm-hmm. I think I had just let God, and I prayed about it. Yeah. Then I went back to sleep. Mm-hmm. I slept. I think I woke up around four. Mm-hmm. So when I woke up around four now, I think the American time here. I think it's early morning mm-hmm. around that time so i checked and lo and behold you have been selected i i think those were the <laughs> best news i have received in a very uh, long time uh-huh. so I, I got the message you have been randomly selected for further processing of, of the, the dv 2024 so yeah. i was like are this the news that people receive mm-hmm. i got i went to google I said, how do people <laughs> know they have won the green card? Yeah. And I went to images. So it, it would show me a similar message mm-hmm. of what I got. I was not sure. I went to Jackie's YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> to confirm. Mm-hmm. Over, I think I had seen a video of her explaining yeah. how she had won and the news she had also received. Mm-hmm. And I confirmed. I think I have never been so happy in my life. You were alone by that time? Yeah, I was alone in my house. Yeah. I. It was just one of those big uh, screens. Yeah. Uh, was this the first week after it has been open? Yeah, it was just day? immediately that day. Oh. Yes. I checked the last day of that month. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> you were patient enough to wait? <laughs> I was busy working for Huduma, oh, Huduma number. Oh, <laughs> my God. And then uh-huh. mom checked, she had not worn, and Gina mm-hmm. checked, she had, do- she had not worn too. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, love that I miss Jamie. Yeah, miss yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, but no. I did at the end of the month. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I think uh, I, I think I just called my mom, my mm-hmm. dad, my brother and sister, and told them mm-hmm. I have won, and they were so happy. And at least that was my light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. It just gave me hope. Mm-hmm. to hold on to something. Did you threaten them? If threaten? you dare tell someone. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it was one of those things where you want to keep them to yourself yeah. before they mature enough. Because this was a, a infant stage yeah. of something. You just received the news. Yeah. And now from the YouTube channels and the information I was gathering, it is a long process. You just don't yeah. mean today and come to America the following mm-hmm. day. Hey, let me tell you, the green card journey is a journey of faith. It mm-hmm. tests your faith True. because you will wait. Yeah, you will mm-hmm. wait, and before now it gets there. So I thought because the it was on an infant stage, mm-hmm. I thought of just let, let, let's just keep it down. True. Uh, when the time is right, maybe when everything is over and done with, then mm-hmm. we can just uh, tell. Anybody so your family knew, you, you told them just after, but they kept it like a secret. Yeah, they, they, it was just an, a family thing. Yeah, I didn't even tell any mm-hmm. of my friends. Yeah. None of my friends <laughs> knew about it. I just felt like because I needed somebody to walk this journey with, yeah. which my family has worked has worked with me through this journey i i just felt those are the people that i needed at that point in time mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. that's yeah. nice mm-hmm. that's very good because i feel like you know sometimes i don't know who i was telling this that 
I might be genuinely happy for, for you, you. Exactly. but then the thing that you're telling me yeah. is magnitude. Maybe my subconscious yeah. is not it's able to fathom that. Exactly. exactly. So I am happy on the outside, outside but, but deep the down inside. I'm holding thought, yeah. doubt, yeah. on whatever that thing yes. is. And, and I used so, to people, people's energies can kill. True. True. Yeah. I, I don't mean to say people are bad, mm-hmm. but we just have an innate jealousy in all of us, in every human. Mm-hmm. Eventually, when you were about to leave, did you tell anyone, your friends, family? Oh, yeah. I made sure my close friends, mm-hmm. Peter, mm-hmm. Uh, and a couple of friends, I just told them, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I am traveling. Mm-hmm. The, I just told them a day. A day before. A day to my travel. <laughs> well, I had intended to tell them prior, yeah. but I don't know what, I think something... When I wanted to meet up with them, something just came up and we were not able to meet up. But, but I was just hinting, I was just giving hints, hints yeah. that some, something is about to shift. Yeah. Because I, they, they, I, I thought of just telling people who, who stood up with me when I did have the job. Yeah. When, I, when things were not working out for me. Mm-hmm. Those people who kept in touch. Because trust me, when I lost it, people go. People leave. Mm-hmm. People no longer call you. You no. You no longer seem important. Yeah. But those who hold you and be like, we've got you. Those are the people that I felt mm-hmm. needed to need, know. needed to know. Mm. Yeah. Did you lose any friends? While I was not working. No, no, no. Uh, after green card. That oh, was. after green card. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Oh, those that you, those the two that you have mentioned, are they still oh. your friends? They, they're not two. They are four. Peter Shango. Mm. <laughs> And George, I, I, I have a very close circle. circle. I, I'm not one of those people who have mm. multitudes of friends. I just have close knit mm-hmm. um, mm, group of people. So yeah. those we keep in touch, but those that are extended who don't know much about me, mm. we, we still don't communicate yeah much. we still don't communicate much or they don't know that mm. yeah. me I lost one you lost one yeah she was jealous I don't know she never talked to she you she got mad because I didn't say the exact day I was leaving oh yeah oh. and almost all my friends those people I don't have a big circle but the small circles that I had uh-huh. I didn't tell anyone I told them after I arrived Okay. Yeah, but they knew I was uh, going, uh, but oh. they didn't know the specific date. date. Okay, yeah. so she got mad that you didn't tell yeah. her when you were leaving. I think she took it personal that I didn't tell her. But then after, mm-hmm. she came to know everyone didn't know. No, oh. but still, mm-hmm. I don't know. She maybe she should too be. Yeah, she should more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe she yeah. felt she's special, so she needed to know. Were you guys close? We were. Oh. Yeah, we okay. were. So she didn't but escort you to the airport? No. Okay. Only my family did. Okay. No cousins, no uncles, mm. no nothing. Mm-hmm. No way. Auntie was yeah. there. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it was my family, mm-hmm. those that we are very tight with, mm-hmm. no friends, mm-hmm. no nothing. Mm. But then, I don't know, I think she took it so personal to a point. But you knew I was oh, leaving. leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every specific detail, I feel like sometimes it's not... Still, as you might give you, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm leaving, I'm yeah. traveling, but for this specific day. And then it's not you specifically that, that I didn't tell, tell it's yeah, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But anyway. So you still don't talk? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Things went bad, bad. Okay. I think yeah. everything happens for a reason. For a reason, yeah. True. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other question is, or oh, what's supposed to, but I feel like this one you have answered after you knew the results, how was the feeling? Yeah, it was a very great feeling. If you ever get it, mm-hmm. after those emails, yeah. they are very funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. no reply. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they are not do any not kind of reply. Uh, do not reply. They are not any other normal emails. Yeah. They just hit different. <laughs> <laughs> so, what case number were you? Okay. I think my case number was in the 10,000. What? Yeah. That's current. Yeah, what was yours? 33k. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I think I was case number 10,000 and something. What? Yes, I was that case number. Mm-hmm. Okay, then now I had watched your videos about the current and 
yes, mm-hmm. current case number. I think mm-hmm. it's about to do with our case is a, a assigned to everybody who yes. gets selected. Yes, and uh, not to mean that I was winning. Mm-hmm. I was ten thousand in Africa. Yes, because it's AF. AF. Yeah. yeah, AF ten thousand. So the green card selects people all over the world. So yeah. you are assigned a case number based on your continent. Mm-hmm. So I think I was case number ten thousand. Just now. So the first and the good thing I think many people will bear me witness the DJ twenty twenty four was a miracle sent from heaven. Yeah. I think almost everybody who got selected mm-hmm. came came. Oh up wow. to even case number sixty thousand. Mm-hmm. I, I remember I was in our camp group where I had people with case number sixty thousand they came. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sixty. Wow. Yeah. And I I don't think there's anybody who got selected and didn't come unless you had a an issue. A, a real issue. Maybe yeah. you lied and you're just topping up somebody who was not in your initial application. Such cases. Yeah. But for D V twenty twenty four it was a different journey from D V twenty twenty three. Even ours. Even D V twenty twenty we were cut off. Oh you were cut off? Yeah, because of that time so many things were happening. COVID Oh there. yeah, yeah. And then for a whole like I think six months, mm-hmm. there was no interviews, no nothing. So me personally, I went. My interview was four days before fiscal year. Oh my god! Before the end of that fiscal year, mm-hmm. I think I went in September twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. In a September thirtieth or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyone after I think forty k, mm-hmm. those people didn't get mm-hmm. like interviews, so they never came. Oh okay, that was yeah. harsh. Yeah. So I went to the same cyber, but. Imagine I traveled all the way to Halingam and cyber are all over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I went to the same cyber, sat down, started feeling the GS260. Mm-hmm. So like I was telling you yesterday, I, I went to, there's a page, I think it's the second or the third page mm-hmm. that asks you for a permanent address. Oh yes. Or a mailing the address. Host. Yes. I didn't know the permanent address of the mailing is a host. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to be somebody who is supposed to host you here in yeah. America. So I just called the cyber lady and I was like, ah, this is why asking me for a permanent address. What is a permanent address? Mm-hmm. She's like, my guy, this is a this application you're filling mm-hmm. in. So you need to have somebody who is going to host you in America. You can't just go to America because you won the green card. Sure. You need somebody to post you unless you have money to pay for and you need to show and prove oh yeah and it, it has to be a lot of money yes for it you has to, to be a lot of yourself. money not just any kind of money yeah so in essence they need you to have a host so it's like oh my god <laughs> i didn't know this thing mm-hmm. so i just had to call my family and i was like hey i was just feeling this and this form because my parents don't know which is this form they just know you're supposed to, you just do you they yeah. tell us how things how far things are mm-hmm. so i was like hey i was just filling in this form and they asked for a permanent address yes which i'm told is being a ho- is having a host yeah so like host ni nani <laughs> so you have no way to explain to them the same way you have been explained to yeah so they was like now where do we start mm-hmm. but miracle had it i got the host by however god did it I got the host. Mm-hmm. So remember, uh, also remember, I said I assumed mm-hmm. you will be given a house, a home, everything provided everything for. Provided for. <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you these things when you're making that application. They don't. Yeah. So I didn't know you have to have a host. So uh, I think we uh, we found one by God's grace, yeah. and uh, I was able to. Fill that in and submit. I did. I was in the GS two sixteen. Those one of those WhatsApp group. Yeah. Uh, they were saying if you like, the American government does scrutiny. Mm-hmm. They will know everything about you. <laughs> so if you lie, you would rather go with the truth from yeah. the beginning to the end. Or if you go with the truth, you would rather go with it all from, the way. All the way. Yeah. So in that GS two sixty, I think I had. Um, lied about my KCSC. Mm. Yeah, I had two of them. I had two KCSC uh, certificates, mm-hmm. yes, but I had only filled one, which was the latest. Mm-hmm. 
I, I, I don't know what ran through me. So I had to, how do I call it? Write an email. Mm -hmm. So I got my BS2C cancelled. So you wrote the email to? Yes, to the embassy. Okay. Yeah, uh, to I don't know Kentucky, whether, something. Yes, that yeah. email address. Yeah. Yes. For you to retrieve your BS2C. Mm -hmm. I edited it mm -hmm. and then resubmitted. Oh. Some people say you if you do that, it delays the process. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... I Yours did not? No, mine did not because I did that on August. Okay. I retrieved back my DS two sixty, edited it to mm -hmm. include the, my second case you see. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they call unlocking. Yes, unlocking uh, that was the one I was looking for. Yes, yeah. unlocking the DS two sixty. And they are very prompt. I yeah. think I wrote to them on a Monday and on a Tuesday they had already unlocked it. Mm -hmm. I had already filled it in and sent it back. Yeah. So uh, that also made me now go to the next wise because now I had to include yeah, um, my second, uh, yeah. So be truthful oh. in your DS two sixty. Mm -hmm. If you are not included a wife from the beginning, don't don't include them. It will sabotage the yeah. whole process. What are, uh, she will join you in God's later. Way. The first people to receive their two NL. Oh, two NL is second notification letter. letter. The first one is the one you receive the oh. news that you have won. Yeah. The second one is the one that notifies you of when you are scheduled for. Your embassy interview. Yes, I received mine in October. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was fast. Yeah, I received you, mine in October yeah. 2021. Mm -hmm. So re remember, I received my results in May 2023. Yeah, I received my two NL in October 2023, mm -hmm. and my interview was scheduled for December 2023. Yeah. That's nice. Like yes, yeah, yes, yeah. So I received my 2NL in October and I think I went for my interview in December of 2023. Mm -hmm. It was seamless. Mm -hmm. Just before Christmas. Just before Christmas. Ah, that's so, nice. <laughs> yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. Sorry, yes. it was after because it was the 27th. Oh. Yes. So, yeah, I didn't was, even know they opened such yeah, time. Yeah, they do. So I was just crossing my fingers because... Yeah. I, I I thought like the way we we think December holidays is from twenty fifth all the way. Yeah, <laughs> to, to January, January, January. the way we do it to yeah. January first. So I was just crossing my fingers and I was like, Oh my god, I just pray mm -hmm. they don't say that the holidays are extended or they are very prompt. If it is coming to work, you better come to work.